All right, have a good week, everyone. <clears throat> a fresh, new, blessed week. And now we're going to learn uh, Lechuti Torah because I'm going to be uh, traveling to the Lubavitcher Rebbe shortly after Rosh Hashanah, after Tzom Gedalia. So I don't know exactly what the future, uh, what the, the, this, this month is going to bring. What is this month going to bring? as far as uh, classes. I'll take my laptop with me, but I don't know if I'm gonna have a place to give the classes or time to give, or if I'm gonna have a connection, et cetera. So Baruch Hashem, I have all the plant pass classes and I have my cellular phone so I can make short <coughs> videos. Three more minutes as far as learning goes. So therefore, we have already learned in Lakuti Torah about Rosh Hashanah. And we learned even about the great shofar, the great shofar that was sounded. And we learned a little bit about Yom Kippur. We learned in the Sikh of the Rebbe, at least Yom Kippur, that that's the day that the holiest person in the world went into the holiest place in the world. And it's the holiest day of the year. It's called Shabbat Shabbaton. And because of that, there's a certain degree of automatic forgiveness that that day brings because it just opens up a window in creation. And the whole essence of, of, of doing a sin is separating from the holy. And this day reveals the holy. So therefore, it's a day that uh, gives us a new, a new start, Rosh Hashanah. <clears throat> and that everybody now uh, goes into their holy of holies, which that, that's basically what happened uh, even when there was a temple that there was not only the high priest that went in, but also the um, every single person had to go into his own holy of holies. It just back then, it wasn't sufficient to do the work on your own. You had to do the actual physical work in the holy temple, the, the, the high priest did. And now we do the work <clears throat> on our own. So we learned about that. But now let's learn about the, <clears throat> the conclusion, the great grand finale of the month of Tishrei, and that is the holiday of Sukkot. The holiday of Sukkot is the revelation of all of the work that we did on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur to the degree that the, that's what it says in Kabbalah. <laughs> Namely, what do we say about Rosh Hashanah? That it brings this surrounding level of God, we call it Soved Kol Almin, and that it brings it into, um, into revelation, into contact with this physical world and everything that we do. So we feel a little bit more that uh, God is with us and that we're not alone. And that we're um, not just uh, on the um, surveillance camera, God is watching us, but God is empowering us because you have to re re remember the very basic thing of Judaism, God is creating us. He's creating us every moment and he's encouraging us and empowering us. And uh, he's infinitely close to us. That's the message of Judaism. God is not some person or some, uh, some angel or some spirit or some ghost or something that we pray to. And that's called idolatry. God is creating us. And that same God that's creating us, he's creating the whole world. He is the God that took the Jews out of Egypt. Uh, there's no other religion that has a thing like that. God personally took the whole entire Jewish nation from slavery, and he brought them to the desert and he gave them his Torah, which is an incredible and a fantastic, unbelievable story. Just doesn't, you know, who would believe such a story like that? But Jews have not only been believing it, they've been giving their lives for this. And then we have this, we have the same Torah that God gave, despite what everybody else says. The same exact Torah has been preserved at the risk of their lives by the Jews till this very day. Despite what all our detractors and all our uh, enemies and our destroyers say. So <clears throat> that's what the, the end really of the holiday of Sukkot, the last day is called Simcha Torah, the joy of the Torah. Just the fact that the Torah still exists and that we still have it. Just the fact, not even what's written inside of it, just the fact that it's there. And it's the, the God gave it to us and it's been unchanged for all these years. That's a great happiness. But before this day of Simcha Torah, there is, that's the last day of Sukkot. So let's understand the whole holiday of Sukkot. 
the whole holiday of Sukkot, Jewish people have been doing this for 3,300 years. And they've been sitting in Sukkot. And if you take it from, let's say, the time that they got into Israel, a little bit less than 3,300 years, 3,290. So the Jewish people have been doing the commandment of Sukkot. In the commandment of Sukkot, there's a lot of commandments. The, the holiday of Sukkot, there are a lot of commandments, and there's two of the commandments that we don't do now. We don't do now, dependent on the temple. Well, I mean, there's, there's actually the more. Uh, there used to be that they used to bring axes every day to the holy temple. First day they brought seven, the next day, I mean, the first day they brought 13, and the next day they brought 12, and then 11. So it came out to be all together in the seven days of the holiday, they brought 70 axes, an average of 10 every day. But they didn't do that. They started off big and came down low. 70 axes. We don't do that now. Don't try it at home. The next commandment that they we don't do now, they used to have what's called the aravos. They used to take the arava and they would big long, uh, what is it? Um, a, a, a sticks of uh, like lulavs and they would, not lulavs, I'm sorry, of, of um, willow branches, aravos. And they would bring them to the tent. They would put them next to the altar. They would put them next to the altar. We have that a little bit nowadays, but not the same thing. They used to be put them around the altar. And then they have two commandments, which we do do now, which we do. One is taking the lulav and the etrog. There's lulav and an etrog and a hadas and a rava. You take those and put them together. And for you non-Jews, you can look it up in the... in. Uh, in Wikipedia or something, Google, <clears throat> the, what's called the Arba Minim. Arba Minim, the four types. You take, look up Lulav, the mitzvah of Lulav. And then there's the mitzvah of Sukkah. We sit inside of the Sukkah. And finally, there is one commandment that we do not do now, and that's what we're going to learn about. And that is what's called the water drawing ceremony. Water drawing ceremony. Every day they would draw water from this uh, from this whatever stream that ran through the temple they would this they would draw water and they would bring it to the temple they would bring water they would bring it to the temple and with great rejoicing and they would pour it on the um, Pour it on the, this sort of funnel that was in the corner of the altar. It would go up on the altar and they would pour it. They would do it with this tremendous joy. They would. Okay, now the question is what's the big joy? What's the big deal? You can understand with wine, they would pour wine. It was also every day there was a what's called a nisuch, nisuch ayayin. It was also nisuch, the pouring of wine. There was right next to this funnel of uh, water. For the water, there was another funnel for the wine, which it sort of had a bigger opening according to most opinions, so that the wine and the water would go down at the same time. So they would, they would go down also into this, uh, according to some opinions, the tahom, this place. <clears throat> okay, into this, they would go down to the, into underneath the altar. But on Sukkot, they had water. So that's what we're going to learn about here, this water drawing ceremony. Let's see, ready? And this is like the sum revelation of all of the service that we did for God in Rosh Hashanah when we sounded the shofar and we aroused this tremendously high level of God's surrounding in Yom Kippur, where it was even a little bit higher. It says even a higher level of God. This is explained in Kuntras Umayyan uh, by the Rebbe Rashab. The, and it's a book called the Kudra Umayyan. You'd say a well will go out from the house of God. And then we have the uh, the water drawing ceremony. So here we have the water. Okay, so it says, It's a sentence in Psalms. You should draw water in joy. So this here. It's there. You should draw 
water and join me. Mine, I hear Yeshua from the fountain of salvation. Huh? Sentence in Psalms. Hine. Bekalish under the whole entire year, Oya Nisuch Ha Yayan. They would pour water, whatever. The whole rest of the day, I'm sorry, not water. They would pour wine on the altar. Haya Nisuch. Bekalish and Nisuch Hayayan. They would pour water on top of the altar. The altar, the big altar in the holy temple, it wasn't on top. There was, like I said, there was this sort of funnel in it on the top. This is written explicitly in the written Torah and the five books of Moses. Becomes many places and tells you exactly what to pour, how much to pour every day, along with the offerings. But on the holiday of Sukkot. There was also the pouring of water. The water, how do they call it? Libation. How do they get libation from pouring? I don't know, but it's called libation. I don't even know what libation was libation. But libation, that's what it's called. The water libation. On top of the altar. Call Shiva Jimeyachag, all the seven days of the holiday. This is what's called Allah that was given to Moshe on Mount Sinai. She'enu Moforish Behed yet is not written clearly in Torah Shebechtav. It is not written clearly in the written Torah. It's not there. Look around. All you want, you won't find it. Rak the Rabbanan Somcha was a Somcha. It was a Somcha Akrai. The rabbis supported it by different sentences. In different senses, they found out that there's an extra mem over here and an extra yud over there, and etc. And from that, they learned water. Okay, now you have to understand something. When God gave the Torah, the Torah is not like what you would think it is. The Torah is not like every religion, all the religions, the Havdil, to separate from Judaism. All the other religions are man made. All the other religions, some are inspired men, inspired by an angel, whatever, but whatever they say. Judaism is not man-inspired, not man-inspired. Afterwards, inspired men explained what it says in the Torah, explained what it says, or they were given from generation to generation different laws of the Torah. And of the, some of them explained the, the Kabbalistic aspects of the Torah. But the Torah is given directly by God to millions of people, directly, they all saw it. But when God gave the Torah, so you might think, you know, yeah, a religious book, so it's got to be like spooky a little bit. It has to be, you know, a little bit something spooky. <clears throat> so, you know, or something that's really like not understandable or really spiritual, talking about going to heaven. That's what religious stuff is about, right? So interestingly enough, in the whole Torah, five books of Moses, it doesn't mention heaven or hell. It doesn't mention it. And not only that, there's something, some things that are very, very mundane. You know, very mundane things, you know, don't eat milk and meat together. You know, and that, that doesn't even say that. It doesn't say don't eat milk and meat. It says don't boil a baby goat in its mother's milk. So it doesn't say anything about eating. Either. But who boils a, a, a baby goat in the mother's milk? You know, from that, but the fact is that when Moses was on Mount Sinai, so God told him that the Torah is a form of shorthand. And that some things are concealed, some things are very concealed, some things are very, very concealed. And some things aren't even there at all. Like they're not even there at all. God just gave it to Moses by orally. For instance, it says Jews are supposed to put on tefillin. The word tefillin doesn't appear anywhere. It says you have to put totafot between your eyes. What is totafot? Who knows what it is? It doesn't say anywhere in the Torah. You can find, you can search as much as you want to. So what are you supposed to do? God says you have to do something. What does it mean? Everybody just does whatever they want, right? Just everything, just do what you want, right? Whatever you feel, just do what you want. What? Well, that's that's an idea. That's that's an idea, but it's wrong. Right? That's wrong. You can't just do what you want. So that's why the rabbis, it says that the, these rabbis said, and there were some laws that were given to them from, from Moses, from Moses on. It was passed down and passed down 
And this is one of them. This is one of them. The law of the pouring of the water. But it's only from the, the, the Sha'av is Mayim. And one thing about this commandment, Hayab Basimcha Gadol, it was tremendous joy. Al Shem, because of the sentence that says, Usha'abtem Mayim Basasan, you should draw water with great joy. This is only in, when, in the time of the temple. The temple came after King David. Umkumabur, like it says in Masecha Sukkah, so fair of Dalit in the end and beginning of the fifth chapter of the Yesh Lahavin. Atam, why Enam Aforish? First of all, why isn't it written clearly in the Torah? Why not? What's wrong? Why couldn't God write it in the Torah? Why did he decide to hide this commandment? Not right, it's not even there in a hint. You can't even find it in a hint. The rabbis learned there's extra letter here and an extra letter that you would never in a million years know that it was there. Because the rabbis didn't learn it. The rabbis just, they had the law. They knew what the law was. And they just found in the Torah where it's hinted at. They hinted it. In the beginning. So, I mean, basically, if you don't have the rabbis, you don't know anything. You can't know even how to read. How do you know how to read Aleph Beit? You don't know how do you know an Aleph isn't a, a Gimel? How do you know? And the Ten Commandments, right? You can't understand anything in the Ten Commandments. It says don't kill. Maybe it means don't kill bacteria. Maybe it means don't kill time. Who do you, know? you don't know what it is. Tzorach Lavin. So that, they have to have the rabbis to reveal what is the secret of the And if, all the time through the history, course of history, and the Jews have had 3,300 years of this history, the enemies of the Jews struck, first of all, the rabbis. The rabbis became the main enemies of Judaism. That was the big end. <clears throat> the rabbis. The rabbis are trying to fool us. The rabbis are this. The rabbis don't know what you're talking about. The rabbis want to restrict us. The rabbis, who, who, I'm also a rabbi. First of all, we have to understand, what is this thing of pouring wine on the altar? Wine. And then we'll understand the water. What is wine? Hine, wine. It says, It says, It's a sentence in Shoftim. One of the judges over there, they wanted him to be a... Uh, they wanted to, a judge. They were like, it was like sort of like a king. They were called, they weren't called kings. They were called judges because they told everybody what to do. They made all the judgments, told everyone to do. So they wanted, mostly they turned the people away from idolatry. So it says that well, my wine, Tirosh's wine, and that makes hap, God and man happy. Because it's known to Bina, Emabanim, he has Simcha. Bina, the power of understanding, this is called, Bina is called the mother of the children. He simcha, this is joy. Like it says, aim a bunim simcha. What's under, what, what is happiness? What does he mean happiness? Happiness comes from understanding. Happiness comes from understanding. If a person understands something, then he can be happy with it. <clears throat> right? There's good things in the world, there's bad things in the world. Good things make you happy. Good things should make you happy. They should make you happy. Right? It depends how you define good or bad. There are some people that don't like to think. They just want a good feeling. They take a shot of heroin. They take a shot of this. They feel good. They don't understand that it's destroying them. They don't understand. Right? They don't understand. In that case, understanding will bring them pain. They understand. You realize you're ruining your life. Ah, what are you talking about? Have a good time. As soon as he realizes, then it feels bad. Right? As soon as he realizes, wow, I'm ruining my life. I have to stop. This is impossible. How are, going to do How are we going to stop? So in order to stop, let's say, take an example, start doing something bad. You have to have an understanding of something good. You're ruining your life. So what? My life is worth nothing. Your life is, yes, worth something. What are you talking about? Think about it. As soon as a person understands something, the good of something, then he feels the joy of it. He feels the, the energy which is involved in it. Simcha comes from understanding. Bina in Hebrew is called understand. That's Chachma Bina Dat. Bina means understanding. Once a person understands how good God is, a person understands what good is, he understands how meaningful it is, how valuable it is, how close it is, that God is creating me, God cares about me, God loves me, <clears throat> God is just supporting me, God gave me responsibility, right? The, the, everything I have is belongs to, everything there is belongs to God. God is creating everything, God... As soon as you really start to think that clicks and you start to understand this, then you can understand something good. Understand something good. 
key because a simcha he gilo yahelam because what is joy? Joy is revealing something from what's concealed. Lochin and therefore nimshach davka mibichin is bina. Therefore, it comes from understanding. Shuhu kishem mevi no masig talumas chachma when you understand what is in the depth of your wisdom. Now here, mostly we're talking about loving, understanding God, God. But it doesn't necessarily have to be God. Let's say, for instance, a person is married. They go to a marriage counselor, right? He goes to a marriage counselor. The husband and wife, they hate each other, can't stand each other. The marriage counselor says, you know, what, can you name something good about your wife? Eh, nothing whatsoever. Why are you talking about Jesus? Nothing whatsoever? Well, you know, she does cook. She does cook. Yeah, that's all. Well, you know, I mean, why did you get married to her? Well, you know, she looked nice. She said some nice things to me. And maybe she could say nice things to you about, man, eh, I'm talking about. And little by little, he starts to reveal maybe there's some good things and maybe the reason he doesn't, because he's just got a negative attitude. Maybe it could be. He starts to see good things and he starts to think about it a little bit. What exactly is marriage and what does it mean? Then all of a sudden a person could start, well, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I thought, you know, I'm probably understanding the goodness in something. And the understanding good. When you understand how good it is, like there's people, you know, that win the lottery. Oh, they're so happy. Someone comes, you know, the most people that learn, learn, win the lottery, it ends up in tragedy. Did you think about that? No, I didn't think about that. But I'm going to be different. That's what everybody said. Everyone that had tragedy, they all said, I'm going to be different. Here, I'll show you movies. I'm going to be different. I'm going to be different. I'm going to... Every, all of them say the same thing. Think about it. Mm, maybe I'm not so happy. But if you hire somebody to help you, and I happen to be someone that can help you, as you'll be happy. So it makes up when a person understands the, the depth of the good, everything that's concealed good. When you understand the good in something, that makes you happy. Right? The, the, the Torah, this, that's the definition, ultimate definition of what is really good and what is not good. Sometimes a person is willing to suffer for good. Suffer for good. He's willing to suffer physically, even emotionally, for something that he knows is good, he knows is right. How many Jews were that they refused to leave their Judaism? They refused to deny God. They were burned. They were tortured. They were this, right? I'm not, not, I'm not going to deny God because I know it's good. Are you getting punished? It's not normal. That's called Kiddush Hashem. He realizes that clinging to God is more valuable than anything. More valuable than going to heaven. More valuable than anything. That's called Simcha. That's a Simcha of, of a Gemara. Simcha means that you reveal something that's hidden. God made the world. I don't know why he did this, but that's what he did, that he hid the good. Good things are hidden. But you can't see the good of the, of the Torah automatically. It's hidden. Therefore, it comes from understanding. When you understand the depth of the idea. Chachma is like reality. You understand it. It's drawn in a revealed way and understanding Basaga and grasping in your mind Mamish. When you understand, when you when you you have grasped the good which is in something, as then then you can be happy. Which is not the case, when you don't yet understand it, Basaga hate if you don't understand it well, rak who nelam. Uh, there's a sign, you don't know what you've got until you lose it. You ever hear that? Don't know what you've got until you lose it. When you lose something, then you can look at objectively at it. Right? Sometimes you get so involved, you can't think properly. It says, when a person is, <clears throat> when the good is concealed, and here, here the Rebbe is talking more about God. So God in Chachma is concept, the idea. And being is understanding the idea. So sometimes the idea, even deeper, a feeling, chachma can also just be a feeling, life. <clears throat> when the good is concealed within just a, a vague feeling, the anal beginning, it's not revealed, lo yakabel onig, you won't get any joy, pleasure, or joy at all. Ahine, behold, hine, bina, nikra, gamke, and alma discasia. The bina is also called the concealed world. Bina, the world of understanding, is also called the concealed world. Why? That was the I service of Levim. Because being an understanding, even though it does bring ideas from what's called Chachma, that's idea. It brings these ideas or feelings into revelation. It does, but it brings them into intellectual revelation. And it's not yet revealed in your emotions. 
So Bina, although it does bring things into revelation, but it's still intellect. And because of that, it still is concealed. This, we're talking about here godliness. It's, how many people that can understand God, they can even give lectures on God, and they personally in their personal lives have terrible personalities, right? They have lust and they can lie and they can, it's very easy. A person understands everything, but it's all up in his mind, right? He can explain anything to anybody. Someone comes to him with a question, they can explain anything how to, like the, the, you know, the marriage counselor that beats his wife. You know, in his mind, it's all revealed, but it's not revealed in, in reality. That's the same thing with God. You can understand these ideas about God. <clears throat> you can understand the ideas of God, but they don't become revealed into your day-to-day -day life, into your, into your emotions. But Zed, that was the service of the Levites. The Levites, like it says, Evet Levi who? The service of the Levites is who? Shemam Shechem, Bechin who? That they draw down from who? Who is third person? Third person. In English, he. The, the service of the Levites is he. Is him. Him. Him is like third person, not you. You is second person, right? Opposite. The service of the Levites is to bring God from the third person to be second person, to be close to you. Hainu, Alma, Discassia, that's the level of the, the concealed world. Like it says in the, in, in the Zohar, who, this when it says about God, when you call him him, who, da atika, this is what's called atika. Atika is the inner level of keter, distant, distant from the world. Amalubash, but bina, but it comes down into bina, and it still is mehelam elagiloi, to be from concealment into being revealed. That's the idea of the song. The Levites, they would say song on the wine. When they would bring wine offerings in the temple, they would bring, uh, they would sing. That's the level of Bina. That's what it means, wine. Makes happy people and God and man. That it brings God to be revealed to Anashim. Hainu by means of Bina. By means of Bina, Shemavian Amasik, that he understands the greatness of God, <clears throat> and his soul gets excited into his emotions. That's the whole idea of physical wine, also. Agoram also makes people happy. The Gilea Helam comes out from the concealment. Like it says, Nichnas Yain, Yotze Sod. Whenever there goes in wine, as the secrets come out, the word Sod is. The numerical value of 70. It's the same numerical value as yain. The difference between the pouring of the wine Shibakalashana the whole year. The Bukhina Samodim the Simcham that is in the holidays of happy and joy. All the holidays are happy holidays of joy. Jews would go up to the Holy Temple three times a year. What would they come away with? Joy. You feel good. You feel that you're not alone. You feel God is creating me. God loves me. God has given me responsibility. He's given me power to do this responsibility. Carry out my... <clears throat> and especially the holiday of Sukkot. Especially the holiday of Sukkot. <clears throat> they also had wine. wine. Wine was every day. Wine offering was poured on the every day. And it was also on the holidays. Holidays was also wine. This is like a person, when a person is very happy, nevertheless, it could be that the happiness is, is by him hidden. For somebody else. That inside is very happy. And it's not revealed to everybody. Right? He's in, a, in, 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 in a, an airport terminal. There's all these strange people. And he calls up at uh, home. His wife says, good news. You just gave, you've had your, your father just gave birth to a baby boy. Oh, he's tremendously, but he's not going to jump around in the airport terminal. Right? He's gonna, not going to show everybody necessarily what's going on. So he says, oh, this, I'm so happy. I'm so one. Thank you very much. Right? He's in the library. Right? Gets the good news on the cellular phone. Right? Can't talk now. It's in the middle of the shul. It's middle of the dominant. Can't talk now. Right? <clears throat> oh, he's so happy, but he doesn't show it. <clears throat> if a person is very, very happy for something, then you can see he can't hold himself back. 
Umoran and Umoraki, then he sings and he dances. Maregal Umatapeach, Miyad, and he even claps his hands. She'en yechol alioz, behester, he can't be concealed anymore because of his great happiness. Kach also in the whole year, even though he gets excited by God the whole rest of the year, <coughs> the level of Mamali call him, so him call me. <coughs> this aspect of God that fills the world, how God is surround the world. He's happy, he feels good. The rest of the year, he thinks about it as good, but nevertheless, it's concealed by him. <clears throat> the light is not so great that it has to be revealed outside. It doesn't dance around. Oh, but the Chag of Sukkos and the holiday of Sukkos. <clears throat> this joy can be revealed to everybody. Kolsha or Bokeah, because the, the light, the realization of how close God is it breaks through or because of the great revelation and joy. He thinks, well, I'm so happy to be alive. This is just, a, I'm so grateful to you, God. Thank you very much. And the concealment from the Simchazu, this is what's a rash godel. This is like a big noise. and <clears throat> he sings, Maraket dances, and Kishanisba Bagashi, when he's physically happy. Also, this is how it is also even more so in the spiritual worlds. <clears throat> like it says, Volfani Baraj Godel, it says this is the angels. The angels, they're making a big noise over there. They're burning up. That's the whole idea of pouring wine the whole rest of the year. And also in Sukkot, also wine. But there's a, different, a deeper type of happiness. That's the simple, uh, that's a water. Pouring water is only in the holiday of Sukkot. And the holiday of Sukkot, there's also wine poured, and it's also a holiday. There's more revealed joy. But there's an addition to that also pouring water. <clears throat> they would pour wine into one of these funnels, the Yimayim, and water in the other funnel, which is right next to it. Ma'arvi shall maim, and we're mixed together. Sometimes they say, they say we'll be mixed together. Okay. But niso chayayin, the pouring of the wine, this is what's called bina. What we said before, understanding. Bringing from what's concealed to revealed. Water is bechinat chachma. But water is revealing chachma. It's revealing the essence of life itself. Hu me'od is very, very high. Much higher than the revelation of wine. The Indian is like this. This is the idea of the Kohanes and the Levites in the temple. Like it says in the Zohar, that wine comes from the side of the Levites. the Kahuna, and from the side, I'm sorry, Yain, wine comes from the Levites, right? Or Mesitra, the Kahuna, from the side of the Kohanim, Mayan. This is Mayan is, is water, Mayim in Aramaic. Mayan slilin nehirin. It is water that is clear and how do you say transparent? Kiteva Mayim, because the nature of water is that it comes down from a high place to a low place. Though this is like the Kohanim, this is like the priests in the holy temple that they were the priests. What did the priests do? Shahashpa'a Yoredis, the coin Godol. That the blessings come down to the high priest. He was like the holiest person in, in the Jewish people. <clears throat> and from him, it came down to all the rest of the priests. Like it says, Kohen Gadol, Notel Chilak Barosh. Like it says, the high priest, the Kohen Gadol, he always gets the first portion. Midas Rosh Hu Mashpia. In other words, he is the one that brings it down. So like in this generation, there's the Rebbe. And then there's all the other great tzaddikim. He gets the first, the yayin, <clears throat> wine, who bechinas, and levim. But wine, this is like the Levites. The Levites, this goes from below to above. Ha'alah mimakam namoch. This is like bringing out from concealment from a low place to a high place mode. Bahu gamkin la'aramakola. This is to raise up your voice. Barash, bashir, with a great noise. This is a revelation of 
this is a level of revelation. Like it says, called Bali Yashir, Yotzim Bashir. It says all of the <coughs> angels. It's a, it's a, this is a, a Mishnah in, in in the Mishnahs in Shabbos. And the word shear means like a ring, a ring around the, there was animals that would go around with a ring around their neck or a ring in the nose, whatever it was. Now it's forbidden for your animal to work. What's this got to do? I'll explain it in one second. It's forbidden for an animal to go out and carry, your animals cannot carry things for you on Shabbat. It's forbidden. Your animals are not allowed to work for you on Shabbat. They can't carry things, right? If you have a, a bunch of rings or something, you can't put it on the back of your animal and carry it. But if your animal always wears a ring, then it can go out with a ring. That's called a shear. So the Mishnah says, call Bali a shear. All animals that go out always with a shear, with a ring, can go out with a ring on Shabbat. But the Hasidim, they translated, they, they interpreted it that any Bali shear, any uh, creations that sing, sing shear also means to sing. Shear that sing, Yotzim, their soul goes out there, elevates with a song. That's like the Levites with wine, which is not the case. Water, water is not so loud. Water is such a high level that it's quiet. like the that they worked quietly. They didn't sing. They didn't. The Levites would sing. They would play music. They had instruments. just like the level of Kohanim is very very high, and it's higher than the Levites, like we said. It says by the <clears throat> Levites, when Leah gave birth to Levi, right? She gave birth to Reuven, Shimon, and Levi. 